Hello students, today we will discuss about the osteology of hip bone. In today's lecture, we only talk about the bony features of this hip bone and how to do the side determination of this bone. So when you will have the hip bone, the first thing you should know that hip bone is also known as nominate bone and it is irregular in shape. So these are the two questions for your viva. Then the hip bone consists of one dorsal components is known as ilium and two ventral components are known as ischium and pubis. Now when you will hold this bone into the anatomical position, then you will realize that the pubis comes on the anterior aspect and the ischium is also anteriorly or ventrally placed. But the ilium part is the dorsal component of the hip bone. All the three component join at acetabulum. Now when you will see the acetabulum, acetabulum is a deep cup shape area and it is going to form the ball and socket joint where there is a triradiate cartilage is present in initially and later on because of the ossification that cartilage disappears and it is actually converted into the bone by the secondary ossification. So when you will see this bone in this acetabular area you will have the triradiate cartilage like this. Now when you will see this cartilage you will realize that we can divide this whole acetabulum into the two fifth, two fifth and one fifth part. Now when you will see this type of distribution you will realize that this is the smallest contribution of one fifth comes from the pubis remaining two fifth and two fifth is contributed by the ilium and ischium bone of hip bone. Now when you will see the uh, triradiate cartilage here you can see that this is the triradiate cartilage which is present here and the another important thing is that when you will see the area apart from the acetabulum. Now this is the area on the acetabulum but when you will see the pelvic part of the hip bone you will realize that you can mark the border of greater sciatic notch and then divide this greater sciatic notch into the equal to half and from there if you will draw a line now this line is showing the junction of your ilium and ischium clear so this is the important thing to understand that this hip bone is formed by the three components which join together near the acetabulum by a cartilage which later on ossify now when you will see the orientation of the hip bone you have to first realize that this is the pubis this is the ischium and this is the uppermost part is the ilium of the hip bone and this pubis is placed anteriorly ischium placed inferiorly and the ilium placed uppermost in the bone clear and these all the two sides of hip bone is going to form the pelvis and pelvis is also having the sacrum on its posterior aspect clear now how to do the side determination now when you will hold the hip bone in your hand you have to keep this thing in mind that hip bone is not present as a individual bone in the body it is a part of the pelvis so Whenever you are doing the side determination and anatomical positioning of the hip bone, you have to keep in mind in uh, the background of the pelvis, clear? So it has a middle constricted part. Now when you will see the bone, you will realize that this is the middle constricted part which is present just above the acetabulum. Now the upper and lower parts are expanded. Now from this area, you have the upper expansion and the lower expansion. The middle constricted part is having the acetabulum which I already told you but the important thing is that this acetabulum always faces laterally, why laterally because you have the hip joint which is formed by the head of femur. So head of femur will come from the lateral sides so the acetabulum has to face on outer sides, clear? So the acetabulum faces laterally 
and the lower expanded part show the obturator foramen. So you have the two expanded part. Now which part is upper and which part is lower? For that you have to keep this thing in mind that this is the obturator foramen. It is always present in the lower expanded part of the hip bone, not in the upper expanded part. Now here you can see I have the two images where this obturator foramen in the upper expanded part and here the obturator foramen is in lower expanded part. But which is right? This is right. It is wrong. Why wrong? Because I just told you that this obturator foramen is a feature of expanded part which is placed in lower area, not in the upper area. So that's why this placement of the bone is right because you are having the upper expanded part without obturator foramen, lower expanded part with obturator foramen. So this is the first thing which you have to keep in mind when you are doing the side determination of hip bone. Now after that when you will see the bone you will realize that this bone is having this outer surface and this inner surface. Now on this outer surface you have the acetabulum. Now you know that this acetabulum is going to form the hip joint so it always faces outside. But when you will see the medial side of this hip bone, I am saying this again and again that this hip bone is going to articulate with the sacrum posteriorly and the hip bone of opposite side anteriorly. So you will realize that on the medial side you will find a auricular surface or a articular surface for the sacrum and this hole is the medial surface where you don't have the acetabulum. So this area is facing medially while this area is facing outside, clear? Now here you can see that this is the bone which if you will rotate from all around you can see that this is your lateral surface. Now this lateral surface when you will make turn, when you will rotate this, this is the medial side where you don't have any kind of acetabulum or the cup shaped cavity. So this is the bone of my left side. Why left side? There are three things which you have to keep in mind. First, I have to keep this obturator foramen expanded part in the lower area. So this broad expanded part become the upper end. Second thing, when I am putting it in the left side, I will realize that this is remain on the lateral side, which you can see again that when you will put it on the left side, this acetabulum is facing on the left lateral side and its inner surface which is you can see here by rotation of the bone is, is smooth. But if I will put it on my right, uh, left, uh, right side what will happen if I will keep this bone on my right side then this acetabular cavity is becoming the inner part of the bone which is a wrong thing because acetabulum cannot be present in on the inner aspect, it has to be on the outer aspect of the bone for the articulation of head of femur, clear? So this is the important thing when you are doing the side determination of this hip bone. Now here you can see that it is a part of the pelvis and it is making joint here posteriorly with the sacrum and anteriorly the two hip bones are articulating with each other with the help of a secondary cartilaginous joint which is known as pubic symphysis. So these are the pubic part of your hip bone and this is your area where you are having a joint with the sacrum. So now when you will see the formation of the pelvis what you will realize that this is these are the two sided hip bone. Now if you will separate, if you will separate the all three components of the pelvis, you will realize that this hip bone is having the inner surface which is known as pelvic surface, but the pelvic surface is always below this ring, not above this ring. Now these areas of the upper part of hip bone are not known as pelvic surface because 
pelvis comes below this ring. So when you will see the hip bone, you will realize that there is a pelvic surface in the area below this margin of the hip bone. Above you don't have the pelvic surface. The pelvic surface is this pelvis which includes the anterior surface of the sacrum and inner side of your lower part of the hip bone. Clear? So you have to keep this thing in mind that hip bone is not present as an individual bone in the body. It is always present as a part of pelvis. Now how to keep in anatomical position? Now this is again the question of your viva. So for that this is the first thing which you should know. Now there are two words are there pubic tubercle and ASIS. ASIS means the anterior end of iliac crest. Now again you have to keep the pelvis in your mind. Now this is the anterior end of your iliac crest which is known as anterior superior iliac spine and here on the pubis you are having a projection this is known as pubic tubercle. So pubic tubercle and anterior superior iliac spine both has to be in a one coronal plane. Now what is the coronal plane? Coronal plane is this plane which is dividing the body into the anterior and posterior half. So when you are having the hip bone, you have to keep this thing in mind that the pubic tubercle and ASIS both has to touch a plane which is coronally placed. So you can hold a book in your hand and with the opposite hand you can have the bone and try to touch both these bony points with that book which has to be placed vertically in this way, not in this way. Clear? The another important thing is that the symphysial surface of pubis lies anteriorly in median plane. Now why median plane? Because when you are having the anatomical position, when I am standing in the anatomical position, you know that in the anatomical position your pelvis is remain straight. So once the pelvis is remain straight, how can you hold this individual hip bone as in oblique plane. It cannot be in the oblique plane. Why? Because again I am saying that hip bone is not an individual bone. It is a part of your pelvis. So when you will have the anatomical position of hip bone, you are actually putting this pelvis in anatomical position. So the first thing is that these two points should be in one coronal plane. Second thing is that this symphysial surface of the pubis which is going to form pubic symphysis with opposite side bone has to be in one median plane and the third thing is that upper border of the pubic symphysis and the ischial spine lies in the same horizontal plane. Now what is ischial spine? Now when you will see the posterior border of your hip bone, you will realize that there is a spine. So suppose the spine is here on the posterior side. So this superior border and ischial spine should be in one horizontal plane. So when you are having the anatomical position, these are the three important points that ASIS and pubic tubercle should be in one coronal plane. The anteriorly you have the median plane with the pubic symphysial surface and your superior border of the symphysial surface and ischial spine should be in same horizontal plane. Now here you can see that these are the two hip bones and this is the sacrum. So you have the pelvis. Now when you will tilt the pelvis, you will realize that this is the pubic tubercle, this is the ASIS and they both should come in the same coronal plane. Now posteriorly you will see that this is your ischial spine. Now when you are putting this in the anatomical position, this spine should be in the same plane of the upper border of your pubic symphysis. Clear? So, you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are putting this hip bone in an anatomical position, you are actually putting the pelvis in the anatomical position. The another important thing is that which I already told you that there is nothing like individual hip bone. So when you will see the this border, now this border is important to understand because whatever the area is visible here, this is the pelvic area, this is not the pelvic area of your hip bone. Clear? Now what next is that when you will see the features of ilium because you know that there are three bones ilium, ischium and pubis. 
So first, when you will see the ileum, ileum is having anterior border, posterior border, medial border. And it is having the three surfaces, gluteal surface, iliac fossa, and sacro-pelvic surface. So we'll see all these features of the ileum first. Now when you will see the anterior border, anterior border starts from anterior superior iliac spine to the acetabulum. Clear? Now in this diagram, you can see that this is your acetabulum. This is anterior superior iliac spine. So this is your anterior border of ileum, which is starting from ASIS to the acetabulum. So this is the acetabulum and this is the ASIS. So this will become anterior border. Then you have the posterior border. Now posterior border extends from posterior superior iliac spine to the upper half of the lower margin of greater sciatic notch. Now it I already explained you that when you will have the greater sciatic notch. Now this is your greater sciatic notch. Then you will have ischial spine. Then you will have lesser sciatic notch. Now in this greater sciatic notch, you have to keep this thing in mind that this greater sciatic notch is having contribution of two bones. So when you will mark the upper and lower half of the border of greater sciatic notch, this upper part is contributed by ileum, while the lower half is contributed by ischium. Clear? So the posterior border starts from posterior superior iliac spine and it will end here. That is the junction of your upper half of the lower margin of greater sciatic notch, which you can see here that when you will have the greater sciatic notch in the diagram. Now this is the greater sciatic notch. In this greater sciatic notch, this part is not completely formed by a single component. It is having a contribution of two parts. So we will divide this into the two half. Now this is your posterior border, which starts from posterior superior iliac spine and it will go till this point of your greater sciatic notch. Clear? Then you have the medial border. Now medial border extends from the iliac crest to the iliopubic eminence on the inner surface and this surface is dividing the two, this border is dividing the two surfaces. One is known as iliac fossa, another is known as sacro-pelvic surface. So when you will see again this inner side of your hip bone, you can see that this is the iliac crest and this is your iliopubic eminence. This area is known as iliopubic eminence, which is a nodular eminence on the inner side, which you can appreciate. Now from this, you have a border. Now this prominent border, which is present on the medial surface is known as medial border of the ileum. And these, these are the two surfaces, which you can see and this surface is known as iliac fossa and this whole surface is known as sacro-pelvic surface of your ileum. Clear? So this is the sacro-pelvic surface of ileum and this is the iliac fossa of ileum. So when you will see the three borders, it should be very clear in your mind, anterior border, posterior border and medial border. Now you have the three surfaces, gluteal surface, iliac fossa and sacro-pelvic surface. Now when you will have the gluteal surface, the gluteal surface is facing outside because these areas are known as gluteal regions or the buttocks. So when you will have the outer side, this surface is known as gluteal surface. Now this surface which is present on the medially when you will have the anatomical placement of the bone, this is known as iliac fossa. Now my dear students, I just told you that this is your border and this border is the medial border. Now area which is above the medial border is known as iliac fossa. It is not known as pelvic surface. Please keep this thing in mind. Pelvic surface comes below this border. Now this is the important concept which you always keep in mind that whenever you are using the pelvic word, we always using, we always talking about the area which is deep to this medial border of ileum. Clear? So this area which is above the medial border is known as iliac fossa. Now in this diagram, this is your iliac fossa, this is your sacro-pelvic surface. 
Now this sacro-pelvic surface is divided further into the three part. This is the area which are having the articulation with the sacrum and this is the area which is known as pelvic surface. That's why this is known as sacro-pelvic surface. So this part is going to make a joint. So this area is known as sacral area and this area is remain into the pelvis. So this is known as pelvic area and that's why jointly it is known as sacro-pelvic surface. Now this sacral surface is further divided into the two parts. This is the auricular area. Now this auricular area is going to form a synovial joint with your sacrum and this is the tuberosity. Now in this tuberosity you are having the ligament that are connecting the sacrum with hip bone. Clear? So when you are having the sacro-pelvic surface you have exactly three areas. Tuberosity, then auricular surface and the smooth pelvic area. Now the uh, tuberosity and this auricular area are going to make a joint with the sacrum while this smooth area become the part of pelvis. And you will see that this is again below the medial border of ileum. So I am saying this again and again whenever you are using the word pelvic area or pelvic surface we always go below this line never above the line. Clear? So in this diagram you can see this is the outer view because you are able to appreciate this acetabulum. So above that this is your ileum and this whole area is known as gluteal area. This is the inner surface where you can see the medial border and above the medial border you are having the iliac fossa and below the medial border you are having the sacro pelvic surface of your ileum but up to the junction here. Now what is this junction? This is the posterior border where you are having the greater sciatic notch and this part of the greater sciatic notch divided into the upper and lower half because the lower half is contributed by ischium. Clear? Now when you will see the gluteal area it is further divided into the four further areas by the three lines. Now these three lines are known as gluteal lines. Now when you will see the posteriorly placed greater sciatic notch from the apex of greater sciatic notch there are three lines. Now one line is here then you will have one line is here and the another line is here. So these are the three gluteal line. Now when you will see these three gluteal line how to label these line. Now you can see that this is the anterior end of hip bone. Why anterior end? Because this is the greater sciatic notch and ischial spine which are the posterior features. So this is the posterior end of posterior part of the hip bone. So this line which is placed here is placed in the lowermost segment. So this is known as inferior gluteal line but it is also known as anterior gluteal line. Then this is known as posterior gluteal line. This is known as posterior gluteal line. Now this line is between the two, this is known as middle gluteal line. So when you will see the gluteal surface, the gluteal or lateral surface of the ileum, it is further divided into the three, by, in the four areas by the three lines which is starting from the apex of this greater sciatic notch. And this anterior line is also known as inferior line. Then you will have the posterior line and in between you have the middle line. So you are having the four areas. This is the first area, this is the second, this is the third and this is the fourth area. Clear? So three lines are dividing this gluteal surface in the four parts and you have the four different muscles in these four areas. Now what about the sacro-pelvic surface? I told you that this sacro-pelvic surface is further divided into the th three part. Now this is your sacro-pelvic surface. Now in this sacro-pelvic surface you are having the tuberosity. So this is the tuberosity. You are having the auricular area and you are having the pelvic area. Clear? 
Now this tuberosity of ileum is known as iliac tuberosity which is having the interosseous sacroiliac ligament. Then the articular area or auricular area which is the ear shape area. Now this auricular area is going to form synovial sacroiliac joint and the pelvic surface, this pelvic surface is here. Now this pelvic surface give rise to the origin of a muscle. That muscle is coming here and it will go like this. Now this muscle which is arising in such a way that it include all the three segments of hip bone. Now this is the question of your exam that which, bone, which muscle of the hip bone arises from all the three components that is ileum, ischium and pubis answer is obturator internus. Now this obturator internus is arising from this is the pubic fibers, these are the ischial fibers these are the ischial fibers sorry this is these are the ischial fibers these are the pubic fibers and the fibers those will arise from here are the fibers from ileum so this is a muscle which is present here so this muscle is present on the inner side of the obturator foramen so that's why it is known as obturator internus muscle now apart from that there is a one more important thing and that is known as preauricular sulcus now what is this preauricular sulcus? Now preauricular sulcus is a prominent feature of female hip bone. Now this is the area which is in front of the auricular surface. So the area which is below, uh, in front of the auricular surface is known as preauricular. Pre means before, before the auricular surface. Now in this preauricular surface you are having a impression and that impression is known as preauricular sulcus which is a prominent feature of female hip bone. Now what about the iliac crest? Now you know that iliac crest is the upper part of your hip bone and it is having a concave inward anteriorly and the convex inward posteriorly. Now here you can see this is the medial surface, you can see auricular area here. So when you will see this, it is having the concavity in the anterior part and you have convexity in the posterior part which is facing on the inner side, not outside. So on the interior part or the inner side, you will have concavity in anterior part and convexity in the posterior part inward. Now this anterior end is known as anterior superior iliac spine and this posterior end is known as posterior superior iliac spine. Now this crest is divided into the two part, this is known as ventral two-third or anterior two-third and this is known as posterior one-third segment of your iliac crest. So this is the whole iliac crest from ASIS to PSIS and it is divided into the two parts. Now this ventral segment is further divided into the three areas. Now how? Now here you can see that this is known as outer lip. This is known as inner lip and this is the intermediate area of your iliac crest. So this is outer lip, this is inner lip and this is the intermediate area of ventral segment. While the dorsal segment is having only the two areas, inner slope, this is known as inner slope and in the same way this is known as outer slope of the dorsal segment of iliac crest clear so there are three areas on the ventral segment outer lip inner lip and intermediate and in the dorsal segment you have outer and inner slope now there is a one more important bony landmark that is the tubercle of iliac crest now what is tubercle of iliac crest the most important question is that tubercle of iliac crest present on outer lip or inner lip answer is outer lip now here if you will see where is the tubercle? Now here you will find that tubercle is present on the outer lip. Now this is the tubercle. Now the distance of the tubercle from ASIS is around 5 centimeters. How much? It is around 5 centimeters. So the question is tubercle of iliac crest is a feature of answer is outer lip of hip bone and the distance from ASIS is around 5 centimeters. Now when you will see the pubis. Now pubis is the antero inferior placement and it forms the one fifth of the acetabulum that I already told you. Now it is having the body superior and inferior ramus. Now in this diagram when you will see the medial surface 
this is your pubis. Now this part is your pubic part. Now in this part, you can see this is known as iliopubic eminence. Till here you are having the medial border of the ileum and this is known as superior ramus, this is inferior ramus and this central flat area is known as body of your pubis. Now what are the parts which we will see from outside? Now from outside you can see this is the superior ramus, this is the inferior ramus and this middle portion which is the flat area is known as body of your pubis. And this body is making a joint with the opposite side. This is known as pubic symphysis. Clear? Now, what are the important bony landmarks of pubis? So, body is having a pubic crest and pubic tubercle. Now, these are the two very important landmarks. Now, pubic crest is the superior part of the body. It is not a uh, line. It is actually the superior part of the body. Now, this is the pubic tubercle. And this area from pubic symphysis to this tubercle, now this area is the superior part of the body and this is known as pubic crest. While this pointed area is known as pubic tubercle. So this is the pubic tubercle and this quadrangular superior surface of your body is known as pubic crest. Now there are three surfaces of the body. First surface is anterior surface which you are able to see here, this is the anterior surface. Then you will have posterior or pelvic surface which is facing inside and the medial or symphysial surface. So this is the symphysial surface which is facing to each other. Anterior surface is here which is pl pl placement is anteriorly and the face which is towards the pelvis is the pelvic surface or the posterior surface of the body of pelvis. Now in this diagram, you can appreciate that this part, which is known as pubic crest, is very well appreciable here. So this is your pubic crest, this point is the pubic tubercle, this is your superior ramus and this is your inferior ramus of your pubis, clear? Then what are the important features about the superior ramus? Now superior ramus lies between the pubis and acetabulum. So when you will see this diagram, this is your acetabulum and this is your body of pubis. Now in between you are having this portion and this portion is known as superior ramus which is located above the obturator foramen. So it is above the obturator foramen. Now, what are the three important borders of superior ramus? Now here, these are the two important landmarks which has to be in your mind, pectineal line and obturator crest. Now when you will see this superior ramus, which is here. Now in this superior ramus, you will realize that this superior ramus is extend from the acetabulum, but here you are having a iliopubic eminence, which is a junction of your pubis and ileum. So this part is the ileum and this part is your pubis. So the junction is known as iliopubic eminence here. Now which line is the pectineal line? Now pectineal line is also known as pectin pubis and it extends from the pubic tubercle to iliopubic eminence. So this is the pubic tubercle. Now from the pubic tubercle, this is your line which is going towards the iliopubic eminence and this line is known as pectineal line. While there is a one more line which extends from pubic tubercle towards the acetabulum. Now this line which is going towards the acetabulum is known as acetabular obturator crest. So this is your obturator crest, clear? So you have to understand what is the difference between the pectineal line and obturator crest. So obturator crest placed more anteriorly or you can say it is the anterior border of the superior ramus while there is a line from pubic tubercle to the iliopubic eminence that will further continue with the medial border of your ileum. That line is known as pectineal line or it is also known as pectin pubis. Now inferior border, now this is the inferior border. Now this inferior border of the superior ramus is contributing in the formation of upper margin of obturator foramen. So these are the important landmark of the pubis. One is pubic tubercle, 
Then from pubic tubercle, you have pectin pubis or pectineal line. From the pubic tubercle to acetabular notch, you are having obturator crest and below you will have of the inferior border which is contributing in the obturator foramen. Now what are the surfaces of the ramus? So there are three surfaces. One is the pectineal surface. Now where is the pectineal surface? Now the pectineal surface is bounded by pectineal line and obturator crest. So this is your pubic tubercle. From the tubercle you will have the obturator crest here and the pectineal line here. So automatically you will realize that a area is present in between these two lines and this area is known as pectineal surface. So pectineal surface is an area between the pectin pubis or pectineal line and obturator crest. Then you will have pelvic surface. I told you that any surface which is facing on the inner aspect or towards the pelvis below the medial border is known as pelvic surface. So it lies between the pectineal line and this is the pectineal line, this is your inferior border. In between you have the surface which is facing on the inner side is known as pelvic surface. Now this surface, now we left with this surface. Now this surface which is below the obturator crest but above the inferior border is known as obturator surface. Clear? So this is the crest. Now below the crest you have obturator surface, above the crest you have pectineal surface. That means if you will make a cut here, you will realize it is triangular. So here you can see that it is triangular in the cross section. The ramus is triangular in the cross section. This is the pelvic surface which is facing on the posterior side. This is your pectineal surface which is on the uh, antero superiorly and this is your obturator surface. So this is the border of your obturator foramen. Clear? Now what about ischium? Now when you will see the ischium, ischium is the most inferior part and posteriorly placed segment of the hip bone and it compri comprises body and a ramus. It is not having the two ramus, it is having only a single ramus. So the body lies below and posterior to the acetabulum. Now here you can see that this is your ischium. Now I told you that there is a junction. So this part is the ischium and when you will go anteriorly, this is your pubic. So this is the end of your ischium. So this is the ischium which is having the body and the ramus. Clear? And this body is below, uh, below the acetabulum. The ramus arises from the body. So this ramus is arising from the body and this is the ramus of your pubis and by this you are having a common ramus which is known as ischiopubic rami. So ischiopubic rami is formed by inferior ramus of the pubis and the ramus of ischium. And so what are the features of the body of ischium? Now when you will see the body of ischium, it is having three borders and three surfaces. Now what are the borders? So one is the anterior border, posterior border and lateral border. Now this anterior border is contributing in the obturator foramen. Now here you can see that this is your obturator foramen. So this is your anterior border which is contributing in the posterior margin of your obturator foramen. Then you will have posterior border. So this is the posterior border of the ileum and this posterior border of ileum will end here. But this will continue with the posterior border of the ischium. So this purple color area is the ischial tuberosity. So the posterior border of the ileum is continue with the posterior border of the ischium. While the opposite side, this is the lateral border of your ischium. Clear? Now, what are the different borders? Here also you can see. Now this is the medial surface where you can see this is the posterior part of the bone. This is the anterior part of the bone. Here you can see the obturator foramen. Now this obturator foramen is having this purple color posterior border of ischium. This is your posterior border of ischium. This is the anterior border of ischium which is forming the posterior margin of obturator foramen. And here you can see that this is the lateral border of ischium or you can say lateral border of ischial tuberosity. Now what are the surfaces of the body of ischium? Now there are three surfaces, femoral, pelvic and dorsal. 
Now femoral surface means the surface which is facing towards the femur and you know that femur is present on the lateral side. So when you will see the femoral surface, it cannot be on the inner side, it is always outside the your hip bone. So once you will have the head of the femur which will come here, now this is your placement of the femur. So this area below the acetabulum that is on the lateral aspect of the ischial tuberosity is facing towards the femur and this part is known as femoral surface of the ischium, clear? Then you will have the pelvic surface, again I told you the pelvic surface is the surface which is present on the inner side below the medial border of the ileum. Then you will have the dorsal surface. Now dorsal surface continue with the gluteal surface of the ileum which you can appreciate. Now here you can first appreciate that this will become the femoral surface. Why femoral surface? Because it is facing towards the femur. Now here if you will rotate the bone, you can appreciate all the surfaces. Now first you have to put it in the anatomical position. Then you have to rotate it medially. Now once we will rotate medially, you can see that this is the pubis, this is the symphysial surface. Now this is the junction of your ischiopubic rami, this is the ischium, this is the pubis. Then you will have the whole pelvic surface. Now this is the pelvic surface of the ileum, pelvic surface of the ischium. Now this is the ischial tuberosity. Now this dorsal surface of ischial tuberosity continue with the gluteal surface of the ileum, clear? This is become the lateral border because it is going towards the lateral side and again you will reach to the anatomical position. So when you will move the hip bone all around, you will realize that all the features are visible here which we have just talked that this is your ischial tuberosity, this is your outer surface, this is your femoral surface, this is conjoint ischiopubic rami, this is body of the pubis, this is the crest, this is the pectineal line, this is the pectineal surface, this is the ischiopubic eminence, acetabulum, anterior superior iliac spine, pubic tubercle. So all the features are visible and the only important thing is that you have to place this bone in the anatomical position, clear? Then there is a one more last important thing is that when you will see the posterior side, you know that there is a presence of greater and lesser sciatic notch. But my dear students, you have to understand that these notch are present in the dry bone, not in the living person. Now in the living person, what will happen that there is a presence of the two ligaments, which you can see this is the one ligament which is visible here. Now this ligament is connecting the ischial spine to the sacrum. So that is known as sacrospinous ligament. Then you will have one more ligament that will come here and that ligament is going from this tuberosity to the sacrum and then you will see that the, these two notch are now converted into the two foramens. So there is a one foramen above and one foramen below and there are two ligaments, one is horizontal and one is this vertical. So this ligament is known as sacrotuberous because it is connecting the sacrum to the tuberosity and this ligament is known as sacrospinous because it is connecting the sacrum to the spine and these ligaments are converting these two notch into the two foramen which are known as greater and lesser sciatic foramen. So now at the end of this class of the hip bone, I hope you are able to understand how to do the side determination, how to place in anatomical position and what are the different important bony landmarks of the hip bone. So this is all for today's class, thank you.